This video is sponsored by Storyblocks, the one-stop shop to enrich your content and bring your stories to life. Well, hello there, another day and another brand new product announcement from those cheeky chappies at Sony who have just been announcing loads of stuff recently, and this is another one. Look at that. Ooh, and look at it, it is very nice and compact for such a wide angle, large aperture lens. Size-wise, it's a little bigger than a jam jar. Ketchup bottle. Same height as a dumpling sauce. Uh, or maybe I'll just put it next to another lens. Anyway, the point is, it is tiny. Well, I mean, comparatively quite tiny when you compare it to the competition. And there sort of isn't any competition, especially when the competition is the size of a large flower pot. The ergonomics of the Sony are top. That keep a good balance of camera body and lens. Not only is it compact, it is quite lightweight. I mean, the body is perhaps, I'd guess they'd say engineering plastic, whatever that means. It's engineering plastic, which I guess is a hybrid of plastic and um, tougher plastic. But yes, it makes it kind of lightish in weight, 460 grams, which is quite light for an ultra wide which is very reasonable for a lens like this. And as a G Master, it's fully featured, clicky and de-clicky. In terms of focusing, it's very quick and very quiet. I mean, it does it with no fuss and no hesitation, focusing back and forth like that. It's all internally as well. The front element doesn't move in at all. It looks like it might. There's a little gap there. I don't know what that's for. But you know, for ultra wise like this, you can expect it not to have a front filter system. It's got something behind the lens there. Oh, hello. We can just do, the I can present the rest of the video like that. So in there, you see some extra low dispersion elements. Then you've got some super ED glass to suppress chromatic aberrations. I had taken a load of test shots when I was out flying another DJI. Remote control signal lost. <laughs> <laughs> Aircraft. Oh, you're not joking not as well. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Not the only uh oh that happened though. Then I came to the realization that I've lost all the photos. And when I say lost, I formatted a card, deleted all. Never mind, it's just photos of PJB. I'm not really too fussed about the number and the names of the elements. It's all about how it looks. And as far as how it looks, it's pretty damn sweet. It just produces nice, evenly sharp details across the frame. At f1.8, you're getting very nice results with minimal drop off in the corners. Vignetting is noticeable wide open, but that fades away once you stop down a stop. Chromatic aberration, nope, didn't see any of that either. In terms of flaring and ghosting, it's really well controlled. This remarkably unremarkable shot laser bridge with the sun shining straight into the lens, Barely a peep. That's at f1.8. And when I say barely a peep, there is a slight bit of flaring here and there. Not too devastating. It's rainbow coloured though, so it makes me feel warm and happy inside. Seriously though, mostly it's quite minimal and usually you just see a tiny bit towards the centre of the frame. Which is an easy fix unless you want a huge massive rainbow flare, in which case this lens isn't for you you hipster. Minimum focusing distance of 25 centimeters is pretty close. It's sort of like, uh, let me check, is it, is, it's that. Because I don't have a tilty flippy screen, I'm using the phone in it. Yep, it's around that. Moving on. Anyway, that means you can get sort of shallow depth of field, surprisingly. I mean, the blurry bokeh bits aren't all that blurry at f1.8, but still, it's looking pretty good. Those little bokeh balls look pretty gooey and fantastic like. The XA elements do a good job of preventing onion ring bokeh. Mmm, onion rings. The outer focus elements aren't amazing, but they are pleasant enough. For those who like staying out in the cold all night photographing the night sky, this 14mm is good news. And I don't mean it'll keep you warm, unless you set fire to it. It does, however, work wonders with the stars in that it photographs them how you would want them to be seen. Coma and astigmatism are like the double whammies of crapdom for astrophotographers. It can make those tiny little balls of lights that are stars look less ball-like. This Sony 14mm f1.8, however, superb. Close up, there really is nothing to complain about. Coma and astigmatism, not a problem. There really isn't much more I can add to that. I just wish it was a worse lens that I could at least talk some smack about it. I mean, you could compare this to the Sigma 14mm, which is massive, but that is a DSLR lens, so it's kind of unfair to compare this to that. And the size of this is thanks to its design. Hello. 
But the smaller size and lighter weight isn't just because it's a mirrorless lens. There are other mirrorless lenses that are far bigger and far heavier and do less. And to be making lenses which are smaller and more compact is exactly what you need for a mirrorless system. £1,400, $1,600 or euros, it's not all that expensive when you think about it. It's just that as a lens, this 14mm is not too useful for many. It's not relevant for many photographers. Now I can imagine that this lens will be popular with landscapers, not the people who do your gardens, and astrophotographers because it's wide and it's fast. It's quite a special purpose, unique niche kind of lens, but it's a good sign when the lens lineup includes something like this. But for mirrorless, their 24mm f1.4, 20mm f1.8 and even the recent 50mm f1.2 are amazingly compact and high performance lenses too. It's a great sign for the Alpha system that it's matured. They're really trying to achieve great things not just with new fancy bodies, with new features that you don't necessarily need, but to innovate with their optical designs. If you want to think about a system to invest in, don't look at the camera specs, look at the lenses available. And right now, Sony are really killing it with the new lenses. Anyway, before we carry on, here's a short message from the sponsor of this video, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is great for beefing up your videos or photos, which is good when you don't have the time, money, or resources to do so. From 4K and HD stock video, there's some great time lapses and aerials in there. Then there's graphics, After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, sound effects, and of course, images. With an affordable subscription fee, you've got unlimited access to over 1 million royalty-free assets. So click the link in the description box below to get started.